Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I really enjoyed the confidence among the youth. But when it came to asking about the age, I was, it became very serious um, <laughs> for some of us. Uh, let me start with um, one reality, because I'm just saying this because of that, uh, uh, bringing uh, the point that we need to prepare the youth. Uh, in my previous life, I lived in one of the countries, uh, Sierra Leone, and I see the Minister of Youth uh, from Sierra Leone here. And as a foreign student, I used to follow some of the programs on the TV. And there is a time they were talking about where do we find God? And some people were saying in the church, others in the state house, it was a powerful institution. And one of the kids surprisingly said, God lives in our bathroom. And the people couldn't understand that. The journalist turned around and said, why in your bathroom? And the kid said, well, I'm the only kid at home. My dad has to drop me to school, then drops the mom. But then in the morning, always my mom will first go in the bathroom, and the dad will be impatient and will say, oh, God, you are still there. <laughs> and the kid believed that actually that's where God lives. And that really requires us to say, well, how do we prepare our youth in order for them to take on the MDGs, the SDGs. I remember, if you can imagine someone who was born in 2000 when the MDGs started, by the year 2030, he will be 30 years old. At that point, I don't know who will be here to tell the story whether I have achieved the SDGs. It is not me. It may be Mr. Greening, I don't know, the minister from the UK or someone else. But I think most of the youth who are seated here are the ones who are going to tell the story of whether we've achieved it or not achieved it. And that's why it is very important that from now onwards, we need to have them participate in decision making, they have to participate in the planning, they have to participate in how to get the right employment. We have to think about really how to prepare these young people on the relevant skills that are going to help us in terms of implementing the SDGs. We have to prepare these young people how to invest, how to save, so that we can create the resources that are necessary for the implementation of SDGs. We have to involve them in the job creation so that they are job creators and not just seekers. We have to create them, I mean, we have to help them to become the leaders of tomorrow. They'll be the ones leading us. We'll be at the back watching how you are implementing, and you have to do it now. In Rwanda, we've done it. The president and the first lady have done a very good job preparing the young people. Now they believe they are the leaders of tomorrow. We can't be there forever. And they are the ones who take a big chunk of these challenges that we are talking about. Come 2030, then it's going to be your turn. What we are doing now in Rwanda, as we did for the MDGs, which have largely achieved in Rwanda, uh, almost all of them, what we are doing is we have to make sure that it's not just adapting SDGs. We have our vision, 2020, of becoming a middle-income country. We are starting now another vision because we're almost achieving it. We have a five-year strategy that is helping us to implement the, uh, our own vision that has been adapted by all the Rwandans. We supported the SDGs because we believed they complement what we believe in. They are part and parcel of the vision. And to do that, we are ensuring that they are localized. They are going to be integrated within our, not only our vision, but also our medium term strategy. And from this, then we'll be measuring ourselves how we are achieving them. And that's why every two years, every five years, we should be able to measure how far we've gone against the sustainable development goals. And this one, by the time 2030, we should be able to achieve all of them, given the lessons we've learned from the Millennium Development Goals. But we cannot do it without having the youth being part and parcel of the entire process. How we prepare them to make sure that all the SDGs are achieved on time. And this is, of course, for ourselves, this is part of improving our own livelihoods. We have managed to reduce poverty significantly. 
we, have almost, we are almost at 16% in terms of extreme poverty. We have achieved all the other MDG goals in the health sector and in other sectors, and now we are preparing the standards to see how we, that, that we can set ourselves to see how we can achieve the sustainable development goals. So what I can say at this point in time, now the ball is in your court. It's you to take it forward. Our job is to help you to prepare you to make sure that you can take the leadership. And you can work with us in terms of, of uh, making sure that we implement the sustainable development goals. We'll accompany you, we'll prepare you, but you'll be the ones leading the process. And I think this is the best beginning that you could ever have for organizing this kind of uh, function to really show you that this is serious business. It's not simple business, it's serious business. And you are the ones who are leading in this process and you cannot be left behind. Thank you so much.